Financial Accounting 13B Receivables and the Allowance Method for Bad Debt. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation, our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep. I've taken a problem that a student sent me to go over in a little more detail this issue of recording uncollectibles, that is, recording receivables that you may not collect. Just as a review, we have the direct write-off method first, where you don't make an accounting entry until a specific account has definitely been determined to be uncollectible. So maybe a customer goes bankrupt and you sell denim to uh, clothing manufacturers and you find out that Acme Clothing Company has gone bankrupt and they're not going to pay you for the denim they use to make blue jeans. If that's the case, you would, at that point, debit bad debt expense and credit account receivable because obviously the account is no longer collectible. Most larger companies use the allowance method where an estimate is made on, of uncollectibles based on sales. You're going to see down here that we have percentages of uncollectibles that are estimated. So it's a two-step process. The first entry, once you've made the estimate, is to debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for uncollectibles. Then, when a specific receivable is determined to be uncollectible, for example, the people who bought denim from you go bankrupt, you remove by debiting the allowance for uncollectible account and you credit accounts receivable to get rid of that amount that you know you're not going to collect, that you know you're not going to collect. So it's a two-step process. So in the example I have here, I've said, let's assume that in year 2014, 4% of the receivables aren't collectible. I'm going to make a correction here. 4% of the 2013 receivables won't be collected. And 5% of the 2014 receivables won't be collected. And so as I like to do, I have T accounts here and then I have explanations below. So the first journal entry is, is that we have sales in the year of 2014. <clears throat> You'll also see that we have an account receivable balance, a beginning balance of $150,000. <clears> so in 2014, we have sales of half a million dollars. We credit to increase sales or revenue, and we sold all those, made all those sales on account. So we have an account receivable asset debit, $500,000 to reflect sales in 2014. Entries two and three are, are the entries we make when we estimate the uncollectible receivables in 2013, 2014. Now, obviously, the 2013 entry would happen before the 2014 sales, just to clarify. But I grouped them together to make it easier. And so what you see here is, is that we have an allowance for uncollectible accounts, which is a contra asset account. It has a credit balance, but it's an asset account. And when we show receivables, net receivables, we show accounts receivable debit less the allowance for uncollectible credit. So we increase these accounts by crediting. So for example, the 6000 in 2013 is 4% times 150,000 is the accounts receivables for 2013 based on those 150,000 sales, which is assumed but not stated in the question. For 2014, it's 5% in green times half a million dollars in revenue in blue. And so those are credits to the uncollectible account and we debit bad debt expense for those same amounts, and that's how we recognize bad debt in 2014 and 15 using the allowance method. We collect some cash during 2014, and that's entry number four, $545,000. So we increase cash by debiting $545. We credit to reduce accounts receivable by debiting, by crediting. Credit accounts receivable debit, cash for cash received. Then entry number five, we end up collecting $10,000 in receivables we had determined to be uncollectible. Now this takes uh, 
couple steps. So number five here, we debit to reduce the uncollectible account, and we credit accounts receivable for that payment. Finally, the last entry I have here, <coughs> again, number five is receivables determined to be uncollectible. So when that customer goes bankrupt, we no longer need it in the allowance account because we specifically identified it as uncollectible. We debit. We credit accounts receivable because it's no longer a receivable if we know we're not going to collect it. The last entry is we collect a $1,000 amount we have previously written off. So you can think of number five as a write-off entry. And now in number six, it, determines, it, it turns out that the company comes out of bankruptcy and we as a creditor end up getting paid, for example. So it's entries A and B. So 6A, we reestablish an allowance balance by crediting and we reestablish an account receivable by debiting. And then as, as we would with any payment that's a receivable, and we get when we get a payment for a receivable, I should say, we debit cash for a thousand, we credit accounts receivable for a thousand. So what we've done in step A is reestablish the receivable in the allowance account. And in step B, we reduce the receivable by crediting. We debit the cash by debiting. Now, this example isn't perfect because, and one thing I pointed out up here is, is that your allowance account at any, at any point in time, the ending balance of your allowance account should be the sum of all the receivables that you had and all the and the estimate of bad debt for all debt for all of those receivables. So what I mean by that is, is that the allowance account should show the allowance for 2013 and 14 sales remaining. So you end up making adjustments to this balance so that your ending balance, your ending credit, accurately reflects sales times bad times that percentage uncollectible sales times the percentage uncollectible should be your ending credit balance in the allowance account. And also, in a perfect world, you would segregate payments received, like the 535, and find out which payments apply to 2013 which apply to 2014. So you can keep a schedule of your aged accounts receivable, each account multiplied by each account with the balance and with how old that balance is as far as a receivable, so you can track just how old your receivables are. So the I put these things in red. The example isn't perfect, but I wanted to point that out. That's as far as we'll get on receivables. Remember that on the website, St. Louis Test Prep, we have a page for our video textbooks, video instruction using Excel templates. Right now we have our accounting for investments in our advanced accounting class in which you receive a video, the Excel templates, a practice exam in Excel with all the answers. So it's video and Excel templates and you can go to this page, find out how much they cost, get YouTube links that show the table of contents. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.